Hey y'all, Adam Sandoval here, and I'm here to talk to you about one of the most talked about motorcycles on the market right now. It's the 2020 Indian Challenger. This is just a simple review of my thoughts and my opinions on this motorcycle after testing it for over 1,500 miles in all types of situations, from mountain riding to city riding to backcountry roads, down the middle of the Lone Star Rally, I've tested this motorcycle in extreme conditions and I feel I am now ready to give you my personal opinion on what this motorcycle is. Before we go any further into this, I think it's important that I explain to you my personal position. I ride all motorcycles. I enjoy most motorcycles. I personally own Indians, Harley Davidsons, and also I have a Zero in my garage. If you don't know, that's an electric motorcycle. But my point is, is I'm not biased any one way. This is coming from a guy who has broken world records on Harley Davidsons and toured coast to coast multiple times on Indians. I am a long distance rider. This is what I do. This is what my passion is. I enjoy that open road for days on end, meeting new people, seeing new cities, and that is exactly what a touring motorcycle like the 2020 Indian Challenger is supposed to be all about. In this video, I'm gonna tell you all my opinions on why the motor company built such a motorcycle, whether or not they hit the target market, some stats and some statistics on the motorcycle, and then I will finish with my personal opinion after 1,500 miles on the bike. So let's get the video rolling. So let's start with the target market. Who did Indian go after with this 2020 Indian Challenger and did they hit the mark? So I think it's pretty obvious and certainly my belief that Indian is going after the performance bagger market. Now what is performance bagger? Performance bagger is something that's been happening in the custom scene all across the world and it's basically taking a touring motorcycle and making it perform the best it can, making it corner better, more horsepower. The aftermarket scene has been doing this a lot by upgrading their suspension to things like legend suspensions, inverted front suspensions, upgrading brakes, upgrading horsepower. It's kind of the exact opposite of the big wheel bagger movement, which a lot of people were doing for a long time, where they're putting enormously large front wheels on these things. Now, the kind of trend a lot is the performance bagger, going more toward the high-end performance rather than the big showy look. And frankly, this is a segment of bagger that I am interested in because I enjoy touring long distance, but if I can get into some twisties and some mountains when I get there and I can rip, I enjoy that as well. So the performance bagger is something that I have been interested in and actually have been building myself on some of my personal bikes. So to have a company like Indian coming out and taking a stab at an OEM motorcycle from the factory with these types of options is pretty interesting, pretty impressive, and maybe a bit progressive. Really Indian had two tasks or jobs to do in order to complete this and make it a success. One is they had to make the motorcycle perform. They did things like putting an inverted front suspension on this motorcycle, which, you know, when you go to do that on a standard touring motorcycle and you want to convert that inverted front suspension, it is a three to $6,000 job. It is that big of a modification to your motorcycle. So for them to be putting these inverted front suspensions right on the touring model from the factory is a big savings and a big step in the right direction. Next, they have the Fox Rear Monoshock Hydraulic Adjustable Suspension. Now this is a suspension that goes a long ways because they've also got that cast aluminum frame. And if you follow sport bikes or any real performance bikes, you know that is a direction that a lot go. They go that cast aluminum frame, it's just more rigid, has less flex, and is going to give you better performance. So that frame coupled with that suspension was their stab at the chassis and suspension of a performance bagger. Following that, you're looking at brakes. They do have Brembro brakes, monoblocks nonetheless, so they did not cheap out. They went top end, high performance, stopping power. Stopping is every bit as important, if not more important, than your horsepower. So that is another aspect they put into this bike for the performance segment. Lastly, for that performance segment is the power plant. They put in the new Power Plus liquid cooled motor. And now this is actually going to make a big difference on the touring as well, because when you get stuck in those cities and that traffic, that liquid cooled is definitely going to make it cooler on you. Frankly, it's the first American bagger I have seen with liquid cooled engine. Um, pretty exciting. Uh, certainly challenging the marketplace, which I guess is why they made the name the Challenger. 
Now that engine I have not dynoed myself, although I have, as I said, put plenty of miles on it. The, uh, the, the going consensus online to the people that have dynoed is about 108 um, to 110 horsepower um, out of the box. That's no aftermarket exhaust, no air intake, no tuning. That is out of the box, 108 horsepower. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what guys can do to this bike, and girls for that matter, can do to this bike with some modifications and some performance upgrades down the road. Then we get into touring. Touring requires some things like uh, enough saddlebag storage, enough, uh, a good fairing typically is a wonderful thing to have on touring. The radios, um, the suspension on long travel, which is completely separate from what you'd want maybe from ripping down uh, a mountain or a canyon. So hitting that mark on both ends can be kind of tricky and difficult they had the adjustable rear suspension as we as we added before so you can adjust that hydraulically for more luggage passengers things like this but then they put in this fixed fairing which in my opinion is the best way to go when you're talking touring that fixed fairing transfers that wind that vibration when you're passing a semi or in some crosswinds to the chassis and down to the ground as opposed to on your handlebars. Now the technology that Indians put into this motorcycle is certainly cutting edge and industry challenging in itself. They have got things, and you've all heard this in all the other reviews, but they've got things like that SmartLink technology. Um, I'll touch on that when I give my personal opinions. They've got the weather overlay on their GPS. They took the GPS and put it in front of the gauges, the gauges behind. So when you wanna use your touch screen, you're not having to reach over your gauges. Multiple modes, including a rain mode um, and a sport mode for your different performance, which truly actually does make a difference. LEDs all the way around the motorcycle. This is something I think every motorcycle in this day and age should be producing. You should not have to go out and buy aftermarket LEDs for your motorcycle. They should come factory. An adjustable windshield, which also is not gimmicky at all. It makes a huge difference. I use it all the, well, we'll get into that in my opinions. They actually brought Metzler in to make a custom tire specifically for this motorcycle. Metzler is a good tire, period, across the board. I think everybody can agree to that. The next question is, is what is the compound and how's it gonna hold up? And there's some variations in this. Now, in my opinion, a softer compound is better because grip is more important than longevity. Uh, although in America, we do a lot of interstate riding and a lot of long straight roads, and like, longevity often becomes the important thing for many riders when buying a tire. Um, I would advise against this and tell you, get the best performing tire. It's one of the most important things on your motorcycle. Things like keyless bag locks, push button start, just to name a few of the upgraded technology things this motorcycle has to offer. So now my opinions after about 1500 miles in multiple conditions. And when I say multi multiple conditions, I truly mean that. Uh, Indian brought me out for the release of this and uh, got to ride with Carrie Hart and a bunch of other amazing journalists and motorcyclists up the California coast and the riding was superb. I don't think you can ask to challenge this thing in a performance aspect any more than the Highway 1 offers and we did just that. We pushed these things to their limits and they just continued to deliver. The more I pushed it, the better it did. Now, with that being said, I do think the front suspension is a little soft for a high performance run. So I would say if you just like to rip and enjoy it and you're not racing, that front suspension is probably dialed in about perfectly. Now here's where I have to tell you one thing I wish they would have done and that is adjustable front suspension. If they would have had adjustable front suspension on this bike, I think it would have really taken that performance bagger uh, aspect to the next level. Although if you had a compromise with a fixed adjustment, like I said, I think they did a fine job on the dampening. Obviously I found the rear suspension to work well. We did adjust it a couple times and tried it at some different settings and found the adjustments to actually make a difference and help with the performance depending on your weight and load. Moving on to the engine. The engine was one of my favorite parts of this motorcycle, y'all. One thing I loved about it is the RPMs carried late. It literally pulled you all the way through the red line mark. It didn't fall off or drop at all. Uh, really around that 35 to 4,500 RPMs is where we really felt it start to kick in. And I'm telling you, my favorite place on this motorcycle, uh, like a buddy of mine told me when he first rode it, he actually got to ride it before me. He said, fifth gear on the interstate passing semis, you're gonna fall in love with this machine. And he was 100% correct. That is where this thing shined in the RPM range. There was no lag. The engine 
um, performed wonderful. We'll see how it does longevity. I'm not really sure. It's a new engine. Anytime you got a new engine, of course, there's things you need to worry about. But as I have talked to the engineers on this bike, they have rigorously put it through tests and they feel more than confident uh, about this engine, how it's gonna perform. In fact, I told one of the engineers, I said, well, I was a little careful with it because I didn't wanna you know, worry about popping the motor or anything. And he just laughed and said, promise me, we've tested it every way possible. You're not popping this motor. Made me feel pretty good. Comfort, I found the seat to be decent. Um, you know, always with factory seats, they're always a little soft because, well, the first thing someone does when they get to a dealership, they walk up and they push down on the seat. And it gives in nice, like, oh, it's nice and soft. What they don't realize is on a long trip, that means you're gonna start to eventually sag down to the bottom and be sitting on the pan of that seat, which is completely uncomfortable. You want that pushback. It's kind of like a mattress with the springs. You want the pushback. You don't wanna just sag down. But when it's sitting in a showroom, that soft seat is what people wanna feel. So almost always this is what you see on factory bikes. Uh, but the styling's good. I like the look of it. Um, it worked good for 150 miles at a crack. My opinion on fit and finish. Um, I think they did a beautiful job on the fit and finish. You know, dampening the, the compartments that open up on the dash. The way everything is really done like a car. The, the inside of that dash really felt a lot like a car to me. And in the aspect of fit and finish, it, it had nice textures, it had nice finish, it fit together well, the lines were seamless. Um, I enjoyed the body panels, I liked the big tank and the way that's shaped and the way it flows down, the slam top on the saddlebags opposed to those old curved tops, the way the handles work on the saddlebags, all of that um, I'm pretty impressed with. I think they did a, a bang up job on it. The way the headlight sets up, the, the LEDs in the headlight, and the way they kind of got those two outer LEDs. The LED headdress on that Indian I think was a really nice touch. Definitely modern but still reaching back to the old heritage of the Indian brand. Um, everything fit together nicely. Now the tech I told you about earlier, uh, this is something that I think Indian is definitely leading uh, the game on in the American V-Twin market. Um, these are things that do make a difference and do matter, like the adjustable windshield and that smart lean technology. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all and level with y'all, when I first heard about the SmartLink technology, it kind of scared me. I was like, ah, you know, I'm a good rider. I've got a lot of miles under my belt, hundreds of thousands of them. I feel like I can handle my bike in the corner better than any machine is gonna handle my bike in the corner. And it made me a little nervous to think that a machine is gonna be correcting my performance in a corner. But let me tell you, I was wrong. I did get into some gravel on a corner and the back end started to slide a little bit. Nothing I couldn't handle myself but before I was even able to correct it, that machine had already corrected it and put me back on track before I even knew what happened. I came out of that corner and looked back and was like, wow, uh, that actually worked. It actually fixed it even before I was able to. So I have to now endorse this technology that I was really all against in the beginning um, because it did work and it, and it did, I'm not gonna say it saved me because I think I could have saved it anyhow, but it saved me faster than I was able to save it. That is saying something. I'm, I'm impressed with it. The overlay of the, of the weather, I think this is a great thing. So many times I've had to pull up weather maps on my phone and then have my GPS running and try to figure out which roads are gonna go around the weather. And when you're doing big miles of touring, that is um, doable, but it's a little bit of a hassle. Having it all in one system, close to you so you can reach it, definitely a huge bonus in the touring factor. Okay, we'll talk about the elephant in the room. Is it a copycat? Uh, what do I think about the styling? And my answers are going to be honest and true uh, for all of you. Here's my opinion. Is it a copycat? My answer is no. There's been fixed fairing bikes. I think this point has been beat to death, uh, made by many companies before any other American company. And it is a segment of motorcycling that multiple brands get to compete in. I am personally glad to see Indian uh, now competing in this segment. And if you look at my video almost a year ago with their Chieftain Dark Horse, I predicted and recommended that they get into this market because it's so popular. And um, they did, they ended up doing it. And it was just a stroke of luck, just a good prediction on my part. I didn't have any inside knowledge of that. But I think it's good that they're playing in this space. I don't think it makes them a copycat or anything else. I think it makes them a competitor and that makes people nervous, at which point they'll start to say, oh, they're copying us. Um, because that's the only defense you have when you're nervous about your product and its comparability. With that said, uh, the fairing at first to me was a little bit big. What first was uncertainty 
has actually, in a matter of a couple of weeks, grown into admiration. I started to really appreciate the lines and the angles and the styling of that fairing. And frankly, the little bit bigger fairing definitely gave me a better pocket in the wind. It definitely, without doubt, gave me a better pocket in the wind. So it performed better. And like I said, you can find on my channel here, if you have not yet, please click the subscribe button down below right now. You can find many videos of me riding many different types of motorcycles. Um, I am not a brand snob. I just like what I like and I like performance and I like touring and I like seeing my country. Um, this is what uh, motorcycling is for me and this bike is, has definitely hit a good mark. There are a few things that I wish it did have. I wish it had the adjustable front suspension. I wish it had uh, a trunk, which I'm sure there'll be an aftermarket or something you can get. Those are two of the major things I wish it had. Uh, for the touring aspect of the motorcycle and the performance aspect of the motorcycle, but everything else Man, I, I don't see much else on it. I, I, I wish it had maybe some lower fairings would be nice for for the touring aspect again um, But that takes away from that performance bagger look so they've got it in several different models uh, Including the dark horse, which is my favorite all blacked out and that one does not come with a crash bar or I think they call it an engine guard for safety reasons or whatever, but you know, I'd probably install one of those just for highway pegs and things like that. Um, even though I do enjoy the look uh, without, without it. But anyhow, those are just my opinions, y'all. Take them, leave them for what they're worth. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I gave you, you know, my thoughts and uh, will I be riding this bike in 2020? Will this be a bike in my garage and how much will I ride it? And would I make this a permanent bike for me personally? Y'all are just gonna have to tune in to 2020 to see. Click the subscribe button, like I said below, and uh, leave me a comment down below. Do you feel like this was a fair review? I honestly want your opinion. Um, I think Indian is doing some beautiful things. Uh, they're definitely challenging the American V-twin market space. My opinion, I'm interested in hearing yours. We'll talk to y'all later. Y'all have a blessed day. Never give up, we're not quitters. We are stubborn. We are the Americans.